Today we'll be talking about the best kept secrets of media evangelism. I have been a church leader for over 20 years and a producer and marketer for longer than that. And sort of navigating between those two worlds, I've discovered some powerful strategies that I want to share with you. And we've implemented those strategies in our church in Austin, Texas, and have shared them with many churches all over the place. So why should you care about this as a church leader? Well, if you've read your Bible, you will notice that the Apostle Paul has strategies. And two of them stand out. One of them is that he would go where the people were. He would go down to the river, to the synagogue, to the marketplace, to the Areopagus, so he can reach as many as possible. The second one is that he would try to use the cultural language of the time and the people so that he can reach as many as possible. Guess what? The Areopagus has moved. The Areopagus is online. And when we use media, we speak the cultural language of those spaces that we inhabit. That's why you should care. So what does media evangelism do? It's not supposed to just inform people, but to engage people, to spark a conversation. And just like with any conversation, things get really boring if people don't listen to each other and if people don't ask and answer the right questions. And the truth is, most church media does not ask or answer the right questions. We should fix that. Let's ask another question. Who is this for? Most church media is good for members who are already committed. Better church media reaches people who are looking for a church. It's appealing. Be the best church media appeals to people who are not even looking for a church. And they look at your media and they want, they want to know more and they want to visit and they want to explore. Let's get more specific. Who is this for more specifically? How old is the person? What's the cultural context? What are their anxieties, their wants and their problems? See, Jesus and the apostles spoke in different ways to different people and so should we. How does your media strategy reflect that? That is a really good question to answer. Here's another question, where should it be? Well, in the same way that people would go to different places to reach different people, we go to different places online and use different mediums. We use audio and video and we use social media and we use long form and short form and we do whatever we can to reach as many as possible and that's the answer. So let's talk about branding. The essence of your branding resides in your logo. Let's talk about the logo for a bit. Some people think it's secondary, it's actually not secondary. I'll give you an example. In the early church, there was a brand that you still recognize and use today, the fish symbol. Why? You look at it and you know exactly what this means. It's the same thing with your brand and your logo. Um, I recommend having a logo that is minimalistic, that is clean, and that represents the essence of who you are. And then you sort of feel, fill it with meaning when you use it in different places, in different mediums, on, on the screen, on t-shirts, that you talk about it, and it, it sort of takes a life of its own, right? It's filled with meaning by you. So, rules of thumb for that, how to come up with a logo if you don't have one. One, don't go cheap, use a professional, number two. And number three, don't decide by committee. That is the kiss of death for any branding exercise. So let's talk about the website a little bit. The easiest part is that it needs to be modern, clean, uncluttered, and reflect the essence of who you are. Here's the hardest part. Most church websites answer the wrong questions, or the questions that are not primary, let's put it that way. They're more logistical uh, questions, more organizational questions. Who we are, what we believe, who's the pastor, um, where do we meet, things like that. But the truth is, most people who are looking at it for the first time have other types of questions. Will I belong? Will people welcome me? Do people seem happy on the website? Uh, is there joy there? Are, they, are my kids going to be taken care of? Um, are there people like me? My age, my race, my, my cultural context. Uh, most importantly, will it help me on my journey? Is that giving me hope? Is it attracting me? And the, the classic mistake that we make with websites is that somehow we think that people make decisions based on logic and rational things and locations. But the truth is, we mostly make decisions on that plus how we feel. So the feeling part is generally absent on websites. You can even ask yourself, how's my website? How does it make me feel? How does it make an average person feel who knows nothing about my church? Those are really, really good questions to ask, and really good questions to be able to answer very well. Let's talk about social media and why social media is so important for the strategy of your communication. Well, no one person can tell the story of your community better than members of your community. And if you use social media and integrate it with the website to create content that is very authentic, very personal for all the members of the community, it just infuses your media presence 
with clarity, with authenticity, and there's not much that can be more powerful than that. Let's talk about visuals for a bit. Visuals are so important because God created you and I to make sense of this world through our senses. So use photo and video, professionally made photo and video for sure, but also user generated photo and video. And especially video because video is the most consumed medium online. Using a less than two minute welcome video on a website is a powerful boost because people don't want to read, they just want to make up their minds. So if you're able to communicate the essence of your organization through a short video, oh man, that's just worth a thousand words. Let's talk a little bit about SEO and social media advertising. Now we're getting deep. SEO or search engine optimization is basically a way to optimize your website. So it speaks to search engines. When people search for stuff, they, th this algorithm decides whether to put your church on the first page or on the 51st page of anybody's search. Now you tell me, is that important or not? And the hard part is that you don't just do it one time, you have to sort of monitor it and, and, and take care of it like a garden, right? Because the algorithms change and your content changes and you have to keep it very, very tight so more people can find your awesome organization, your ministry, your community online easier. Social media advertising is more challenging because it takes more faith and more money. But I want to bring it up because it does have an impact on how you can communicate. It has an amplifying effect. So any, let's say an event or a sermon series, it could be seen by 500 people or 50,000 people. And if you infuse some money into an ad, ad campaign and you have somebody monitoring it, it can make a big difference for your church. So how powerful and transformative can this be for your ministry? Pretty powerful, right? Usually the problem is resources. And I want you to ask yourself a question. Is this important or is this vital for my ministry? Because if we start thinking of something as a vital, we tend to reprioritize, rearrange our resources and find the resources. If you want to take your media evangelism effort to the next level, be strategic. Invest in a strategy that is robust because if you don't have a map on how you want to get somewhere, you're probably not going to get there. Get your team together, get unified about what you want to do, and imitate the heart of Jesus and the apostles and how they wanted to impact and move around and go where the people are and speak their language so they can reach as many as possible. I pray this helps you. God bless.